Hi, welcome to my yeast starter tutorial. I'm going to do this real quick with a one take to kind of tell you how I make a yeast starter. Um, and I'll just talk through the process. It's about a 10 minute video. I do a half gallon starter. Yeah, this picture here is a half gallon growler. That's how I do most of them. That's how I've started out. I start out with a two pounds worth of malt extract, usually the lightest as possible. And I'll split that into uh, five or six bags of one and one quarter cup each throw those bags into its own zipper bag and then I keep it there. Um, and then whenever you want to do a, a starter you just pull one of the little bags out and put it in. I mix it with three pints of water. So what you see here is the three pints of water with one of those bags which is again a cup and a quarter of malt extract. And I stir it uh, with a temperature um, thermometer. So I sterilize the thermometer at the same time. Um, while that's getting done, I'll fill up the sink with uh, something cool to cool it down, just like doing your chilling your wort when you're doing your brewing. Um, in my case, I'll just fill the sink with some ice and water, just to the point where the pan will fit in there. So here I'll dump in some ice. Um, doesn't take much, but there's other ways to do this. You don't have to do it this way, but uh, I find this actually cools it down pretty quick. Um, I'll sometimes use a smaller pan if necessary to to use less water. So once uh, she's done boiling, I'll let it boil for about 10 minutes and that sterilizes the thermometer and gets the extract ready. Uh, also getting the growler ready, I'll sanitize it. Here I'm putting it upside down just to let it drip a little more. Yep, my sink is ready. Turn off my water. I make sure there's nothing that can drip in there. Uh, once that yeast starts to cool down, just like with wort, you want it to be very sanitary. So. I'll take my wart and set this in there. Here I'm using a uh, a, t a Teflon coated like nonstick pan. Not recommended. I actually we burnt ours last month, so this is all I had um, for the demonstration. But I don't recommend using this. You want to use a stainless steel kettle or something like that. Uh, don't use Teflon. But she'll start to cool, and here you can see why the thermometer is so nice because now you can just pay attention to how it's cooling. This example, though, I'm taking my yeast starter from a secondary batch of brew. There it is, a cake at the very bottom. So what I'll do is, uh, while it's cooling, I will transfer the wort. Uh, oh, looks like we're right there. Um, and once that beer comes off, I have a nice empty carboy. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, but emptying here. That'll take a little while. I guess we're still chilling. This is the exact same process you would do with a like a White Labs, um, a tube of White Labs that you'd buy. Instead of using the yeast from a previous batch, you get your starter ready and you just pour in your your uh, tube. But in my case, I didn't want to buy a tube. I just want to repitch the yeast I had before. Um, I'm using the secondary. Secondary takes a little longer to kick off. Uh, you can do this with the primary as well. Oh. There, I'm happy with my temperature. Um, so I get the uh, growler ready for my three pints of brew. The wort. You can put hops in it. You'll read you can put hops. If you're doing a brew and you have some hops that you want to put in to help uh, that antiseptic quality, uh, feel free. I've never used hops, but uh, there's nothing saying you can't. So I pull out the thermometer. It's important, again, not to get any other kind of introductions of bacteria, little water drips or whatever. I don't like actually having the air, uh, you know, exposed to the wart, but not a whole lot of more I can do about it under this kind of setup. Um, so that's what, what it's worth. You do as clean as you can and you, you move forward. So I'm almost done siphoning off. Try to time it to where the least amount of time elapses between the time I, I pour the wart in and I get the the yeast going, but again, not something to worry too much about. Pour your wort in there, it fills it, eh, not quite two thirds, so for your three pints of brew, plus that helps aerate it really nice. So there, that's ready. Uh, you're ready just to pitch in whatever yeast you want to use to start now. In my case, I'm using a leftover from the secondary. I'll give her a nice swirl. Actually, cake's on there pretty good. This one's been sitting for about a month. Um, so it's pretty sediment in there, and so the, the yeasts are, although it looks like there's a lot, the viable cells is probably not as much, so you, you know, it, 
Um, you definitely want to swirl it around and get all that stuff churning up to get as much into the starter as possible. I've done this before where you actually also don't don't pull your beer. Like if you're in your primary and you just want to pull some off, you can stick your siphon tube down in there and pull a couple off, uh, just a little bit off the bottom. Uh, you just don't use the tip that goes on your siphon tube. So those little bit of yeast will come right out, put it in your starter, and that'll kick off. And then you can just let your beer keep fermenting. But in this case, I went ahead and transferred off the carboy and racked it. And now I'm just going to put in uh, some of that yeast slurry onto the top of my, my new wort. Uh, using the combination of what I did, the three pints with the p a cup and a half of DME, or I'm sorry, a cup and a quarter of DME, pretty much gives you a 10... 1040 specific gravity, the 1.040. Uh, it's kind of a rough estimate, but um, that's kind of what you want. Ideally, it's going to match what you're brewing. You, you can get as fancy as you want with your measurements, but uh, I always use the same one. And I use a lighted light of DME as possible. Um, if you're doing dark beers, it's not a big deal at all. If you're doing lighter beers, uh, this matters. So you're, you're going to want to make sure you're uh, using the same the same color for your DME uh, as light as possible. So I just, doing this one hand is a little difficult, but I had to, you kind of move the siphon tube up and down to draw it off. Uh, it's not this difficult when you have two hands, but I'm filming with one hand. So I'll drip off into there, I don't know, maybe a half a cup to a cup um, with what I can get easily from the bottom, that slurry. And so those will be happy little guys. Of course, everything touching here is has been sanitized. So it's in good shape. And yeah, doing this with one hand was very tricky. But it turned out fine. Actually, uh, I'm recording this on, what is it, Wednesday? Uh, we did this on Sunday night, and I brewed with it on Tuesday. Uh, it just started to take off. So two days is good, especially good for a primer. You might want to go three days if you're going off a secondary. So if you're going to brew on a Saturday or Sunday, you'd want to do this maybe Wednesday of the, you know, the week prior, three days prior to your brew. Anyway, that's kind of it. I think I'm all done here. I got enough. I'm happy with it. I'll take it off. Yep. Looks good. Uh, at this point, you just put your stopper on, just like you normally would do anything. Pretend it's a big carboy. Fit it with your airlock. Uh, Ideally, you'll see signs of fermentation uh, within a day or two, um, especially if it's off the primary within a first day for sure. In reality, you're trying to get good yeast cells, not necessarily the quantity. So, um, and you're wanting them to go into that, I think that first respiration where they're multiplying, that's the important part. You don't want them converting to alcohol quite yet, um, but it, it, you know that catching them in that early stage is what you want. Um, I am doing a bit much for that for the starter here from uh, a staging perspective. In other words, a lot of people will do a smaller one and then a bigger one. Um, but I just do this all at once. So you could stage it up doing more and more each time. That's it, ready? Now I have switched to this new process of using a, an Erlenmeyer flask. With the three pints, it goes to the 1500, oh, is that CC mark? Not CC, I don't know, I forget what the measurement is on there, but for metric. You'll heat it on your heat source, just like we did with the pan. Uh, except you can't use a glass top. You're supposed to use a, a, gla uh, a flame or an um, electric element. You chill it all in the same thing, and then you throw your stopper on. It's nice all in one. Um, I've only done one or two with that this way, so I didn't demonstrate it because most folks don't have the flask. I just got mine. I've been doing these half-gallon growlers for years, and they work great. Uh, I just happen to have a nice little snug thing here that the growler fits into as a, a cozy. If you have anything like that just to help protect the glass and keep it dark, it works great. I'll take this whole thing, set it on the corner of the table, uh, where our house is, you know, just a good temperature to stay warm at 68, and that's all she wrote. So, uh, good luck to trying to use starter. It definitely makes a difference in the quality of your beer.